Great, Jan, thanks very much. Yeah, great. Thank you, Will, for that introduction. Um, it's slightly strange speaking to you in, to my laptop, to my screen, um, but I'm, I'm sure you guys are quite used to it now, um, having this way of teaching, interacting and, you know, studying. Um, but well, I hope everyone is well and um, kind of keeping up um, with their health and their studies in these really strange times. Um, as Will said, I'm, I'm happy for people to interrupt me because I want this to be an interactive, se interactive session um, just to, you know, so that we're not kind of being flat on the screen. I'm, I'm happy to ask uh, or answer, reply to any questions that you may have. And I'm going to talk about bamboo buildings and also just generally about the material itself. Um, I could talk for hours, so I've just tried to um, put a kind of concise-ish presentation together. But afterwards, if you want to contact me, we can do, you know, we can email and you can ask many more things. So um, starting off, we're going to talk about the introduction and why bamboo, the background behind it, um, aspects of environmental design, projects, new bamboo development, and parametric design and architecture. I think that's kind of hot topic now at the moment. Really interesting things happening with parametric design. Um, bamboo limitations, obviously, um, there's things that you can't do. Then we can look also towards the future, and at the end we'll have a Q and A as well. So um, I'm going to start off with doing a bamboo quiz because um, I, I just want you to kind of know a little bit about it in in a fun way. So I'm going to ask a few questions, and um, you don't have to answer them on the chat box. You can in your head, um, but yeah, just to kind of start you off. So um, right, so what kind of plant is a bamboo? Is it a is it a tree? Is it a grass or is it a reed? Yeah. Um, I'm going to give you some moments, okay? And so, see, it's a grass. So a lot of people think that bamboo is a tree. They, people people say bamboo tree, but it's not. It's actually a grass. It's a gigantic grass. So once you we, kind we, of get that, hmm. no, we had two, we had two correct answers there. Oh, we did. Okay, good. Very good. Susan and Michael. Yeah. So well done. Very good. Um, people get mixed up and I think that once you understand that it's a grass um, you 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 understand a little bit more about this plant and its um, growing potential okay the second one is how much can bamboo grow in one day is it 10 centimeters 30 centimeters or 90 centimeters okay this one throws people off a lot actually um, it's 90 centimeters yeah, many a lot of people got that. Will? Probably got it wrong, but um, uh, but but Michael and um Jackie uh, got it right. Yeah. yeah Peace. Yeah, okay. So bamboo can grow up to ninety centimeters in a day. That's almost a meter. So given the appropriate conditions, you can imagine the fast regenerative speed at which it can grow. Um, and this also causes um, you to think, OK, so in this certain amount of area, um, we can plant this much bamboo and it will grow this fast. So as a material for building, that superpower um, can be really be utilised. OK, question number three, when can bamboo be harvested to be used for construction? Is it three years? Is it seven years or is it 15 years? Yeah, I'm going to change it now. OK, it's three years. So in three to five, how many, how many people? Yeah, we've got a few good right, good, we've got some good right answers again. Again, from yeah. the experts, so Jackie, Harry, good. Hugo, Lisa, yeah. Great, great. So in three to five years, you can cut down the bamboo and you can harvest it, um, which is fantastic because if you think about a pine tree, pine trees, you can harvest them in 15 years and oak trees maybe 80 years so if you're able to cut down and harvest and work with a material after five years um that's pretty i think that's pretty excellent and it just means that it has it can regenerate so much more faster so this is really good and which continent is home to most of the world's bamboo australia asia southern america or africa It's Asia. So the home of bamboo is Asia. Many people got that. Yeah, everyone went for Asia. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, 
in Asia, it's the home of bamboo. Um, but then I'm going to show you a map later on about how bamboo spread throughout the world. So um, it can grow in all, all continents. So when people say, oh, you can't grow bamboo in Europe, actually you can. There's actually lots of bamboo nurseries that are growing bamboo for construction in Europe and in America. And then the last one is what colour of bamboo has been known to grow abundantly? Blue, purple, white and orange. Okay, here we go. It's all of them. So basically, that's just a fun question. Um, but when you're making products and furniture, you can use the colors of the bamboo to create these amazing, beautiful products. And it's just a kind of another selling point, And it just shows the variety of the material. So I hope that was a little bit fun. Did anyone get five correct? Yes, I think we got a few people that did here. Yeah. yeah. Great. That's just a bit of fun. Um, so we're going to move on now quickly. And so I just want to explain a little bit about what I do. Um, I'm a bamboo architect, architectural designer, and I started off in architectural school um, kind of looking for a way to design differently. And then I realized after my, um, my undergrad that and there was something a little bit not wrong, but I, I wanted to find another way to be a bit more um, creative and learn about putting materials together. So I went on this mission to, to learn about the material and how um, you can use it, design it, cut it, you know, bend it, shape it. And, and I trained with different masters around the world. And it has been an amazing journey. And I'm really happy to be coming back to London and to Europe and to share all these things with you guys. These are just a few, some projects that I did. Um, this was in Portugal. Um, second right is in Port uh, Portugal as well. Bottom one's in Panama. and the bottom right one is in Brazil so and tonight I'm going to talk about both whole poles in construction but also manufactured and engineered products and um, because what's happening now is that it's the two are changing the industry it's actually more the manufactured and engineering products that are making um, I guess headlines because now there are so many things you can do with engineered bamboo that People are not are looking to use this as a replacement of timber. And as everybody knows, the, the timber industry there can be from a very unsustainable source. So with um, bamboo, if you can imagine, if that can replace some of these industries there, you know, to, to get rid of like, illegal logging, this is an amazing um, material to do so. OK, so why, why bamboo? Um, it has an aggressive growing it's an aggressive growing plant species, which can be grown and harvested regularly. It grows in abundance all around the globe. Um, bamboo is known as the green steel, and it has a strong tensile strength that rivals steel, and its weight strength to ratio rivals graphite. Um, a bamboo grove can release 35% more oxygen than that of uh, than that amount of trees. So if, say, for example, if you plant the, um, an acre of bamboo in one area and then an acre of oak trees in the other area after three to five years or even before um, compare the two areas the bamboo area can release 35 percent more oxygen than that of the oak trees um, it's lightweight to work with which is good because when you're transporting it um, you're not using so much uh, I guess petrol and obviously the carbon emissions from transport which is like reducing it um, people are becoming interested in natural building methods, obviously, sustainable architecture. It's very versatile for temporary and permanent constructions. It's beautiful and elegant, and there's a lot of applications that you can use this plant for to build with products and handicrafts. You can even eat it. So this is a map of um, the bamboo green belt. And what you can see is that Along the equator, you have the high concentration pretty much of where bamboo grows abundantly. And um, this is because obviously the temperature, oh, my map, map there. if you think about the temperature, um, bamboo does need heat to grow, but it also needs humidity. Um, uh, what it is as well is that if you think about the industry and what's happening out there, these are developing countries. so. We can now kind of predict what may happen is that bamboo may become a resource and a new industry for the developing countries. So this is an amazing, exciting thing. Um, it started, obviously, as I said, in China, and then it kind of spread throughout 
Asia here. And then obviously uh, it was it, it, along some trade routes, for example, it went from China to India. And actually what is found is that the bamboo in South Africa, it came over from India. So there were the similar species there. So this is what's happening, you know, which happened over hundreds of years is that bamboo was moved around the world, um, sort of being uh, transported onto ships and then planted in these new um, new sites. Um, in Colombia, uh, you've got the kind of epicenter of bamboo because they had the best guadua um, species there, which is excellent to build with. Uh, Mexico at the moment, there it's kind of the epicenter for new bamboo architecture because there's lots of young architects who are really interested in creating these amazing um, like organic shapes. Um, and then in Ethiopia, that's I think it's the best industry for bamboo charcoal that's happening at the moment. They have really good um, bamboo there too. So we'll come back to that later and I'll, I'll probably talk about that later. And um, just talking about why you can utilize everything is because the whole plant can be used for all the different types of products, parts of houses, um, furniture, bamboo straws. On the base here, you have the rhizome, which is the root. And these are used for, um, yeah, these are used for furniture. Um, these are used for strong parts of like houses or constructions. Um, the bamboo roots can really run quite far. So you have two types of uh, bamboos. You've got running and clumping. And the one that causes a lot of problems in the UK in gardens is actually running because it has, um, they basically grow extensively and they just don't stop going. So composed to clumping bamboo, they grow in small chunks um, and that's more kind of easy to manage. And um, actually people prefer to use uh in in gardens for like ornamental things um clumping bamboo because it's easier to control but anyway that's something else and then we have the stump here moving up the the plant we have the stump here which is used for columns um this is the strongest whoops, the strongest part of the bamboo um and because it's all the the, the fibers are really dense here you know so you're going to get a lot of um strength there when you build and then this part can be used also for columns, beams, uh, mats. Um, it, it will taper as well with the shape. Um, but this part is a very, this is the most, kind of most useful part here. Um, then you have the over base and this part, which is for furniture and some elements. And then you've got the top of the part here, which is for bamboo straws or fishing poles. So basically the whole thing can be used plus the leaves. So it's a very useful material so not only in construction but just for the whole industry itself just going to talk about the actual structure behind it so i'm i'm sure you guys have come across bamboo in your lives i mean you know it's, it's hard to miss it but what we're looking at here is why bamboo why is bamboo so strong you may ask well uh if you if you you see the kind of overall all shape of it here in the center it's hollow um, but it's separated separated by these things called nodes and these are kind of the strong intervals um why bamboo is so light but strong is because it's not a solid piece you do get solid pieces of bamboo um here it's really using kind of nature's intelligent design um to have these i guess break points um where you, it is completely firm and filled in so it can be light and strong at the same time and then if you look here across at the cross section, um, microscopically, all these small little dots are, bam are the, they're like vessels, they're, they're vascular bundles. And as the bamboo gets older, this part intensifies and it gets stronger. So if we're talking about strength in layers and the variation in layers, I've got kind of a diagrammatic here that I made of bamboo. Obviously, it's not <laughs> the same kind of diameter here. But the outer layer is the strongest part. As you get towards the center, it's made up of more water tissue and fibers. So you kind of want to be hitting your um, your, your bamboo to uh, like sit along here. And then also when you're cutting it, I just want to go back there. When you're cutting it, you want to include this part because you want to rest bamboo on top um, uh, on top where they're above the uh, above the node here so uh, young's modulus has been used by um sort of engineers to determine the stiffness in layer 
and um, we can use the stiffness of layer as we can say as E. And um, there has been tests there to, to see what the strength ratio is. And so here, the inner layer can, can, contains 10% of the fibers and 90% of basic tissue. And then you've got the middle layer here, which contains 30% contains of fibers and 70% um, of basic tissue. Oops. And then you've got um, the outer layer, which contains 60% of fibers and 40% of basic tissue. So um, the stiffness ratio is 1, 3 to 6. Um, and this is when you're uh, this is really good because we then know when we're cutting through to make splits, we should use um, material which is more nearer to the outside because that's where the strength of the bamboo is. You can also use the inside, but if you can catch um, the outer rim of the layer of the bamboo, that's going to give you the most strength. Talking a little bit about tension and compression. So what is tensile strength? It's the resistance to be pulled apart. And compressive strength is also the resistance to be pushed together. So bamboo has higher tensile strength than steel, and it has a higher bending strength than steel as well. And these are some tests done by future cities. Um, I would recommend going on, um, checking this out online. If anyone is interested in bamboo, this project that they're doing, I'll put a link in the chat box after. If you see, they've made an amazing PDF about things that they're making and the industry. So, so look at this and see what's happening within um, the bamboo industry. Um, just looking at some forces and what we're dealing with here is, um, again, we're looking at compression and tension. Bending, which is, you know, it's great because bamboo is so flexible, so you can use the properties of its bending strength to design these amazing curvy roofs or furniture pieces or walls. Um, torsion, which kind of natural torsion happens when bamboo is growing. Because it's a plant, it doesn't grow just kind of straight up like a, like a tree. Actually, as bamboo grows, it kind of twists. So the fibers kind of twist on in itself. But that gives it extra strength. So this is one of the properties why when you're working with material, you need to know what, how it grows, that it's a plant and what it does. Because once you know these factors, it's like, oh, I can design it because it's, it's going to turn in this direction, for example. Or it will naturally be strong um, under that weight. Um, shear, shear force is when there are two points pushing um, pushing materials, whether it's steel or wood, into two different directions, and then it splits in the middle like this. This rarely happens, but it does happen sometimes. But actually, the other shear problem we get is when, um, Will, can you see my screen? Can anyone see me? Yes, if we could, if you, if, if you, yeah, you can press a little button at the bottom and see, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, well, uh, can you see me now? No. Yeah, I can see, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Basically, what can, what does happen is that um, I'm just showing you a piece of bamboo. It splits down the center because this is to do with um, moisture evaporating quickly um, from the bamboo, so it actually splits. So this is a kind of common problem with bamboo, um, and this is this is the sheer internal force here that does that. Um, and then buckling when bamboo bends. So knowing knowing about these forces really helps when you're trying to create a certain piece of the sculpture that you know okay we can't design it in that way because it's not going to work but anyway more on that later so the reason why this is important is to know about the process of building and um gonna gonna talk to you about different types because it's all part of the environmental and technical design and construction strategy because even though this is a technical studies lecture you need to think about the process of designing and constructing together. It's not separate of bamboo, it's together. Um, knowing knowing from the beginning what you're designing, how you're designing it, where you're, which country you're designing it in, where is it going to be built, that's all part of your technical design. You've got to know it from the beginning. So this comes from identifying the bamboo, harvesting at certain times of the year, cleaning treatments, transporting, where are you going to store it, you know? um designing and building it with a team it is going to need aftercare and maintenance and it may need replacing so identifying the bamboo there's different types of species that have different properties 
Um, this is part of a research paper that I'm doing at the moment, and it's looking at all the different types and what their properties are and where you find them and bamboo trade routes. So in Colombia, um, as I said, they have the best bamboo uh, to grow with. Um, there is called the, the guadua um, because it has very little taper. Um, the, the nodes are spaced in even intervals. Um, it looks attractive. It's strong. Um, it's durable. It takes um, varnish very well. Um, it's, it's, it's an amazing. I love guadua. I, I prefer to use <laughs> only guadua mainly to build. Um, Dendrocalamus asper. This is another clumping bamboo. Um, this is mainly they mainly use it in Asia because it's it's more based there, and they they really use it for columns and um, and some beams mainly kind of the structural framework of the house or the of the building they they use Dendrocalamus asper. Um, Dendrocalamus nigra is just um, it's like a black it's a black bamboo but it's the same species. Janticola uh, Janticola apus this is used. Um, for furniture, it's also used for products. Um, it's a lightweight bamboo. The nodes are kind of spaced further apart. Um, the bambusa blumena, this one is a thorny bamboo. It's also used for products. Um, it's more generally used in the Philippines and Thailand. Um, this is also very light and it's, it's got thorns, so you have to really clean it. It's quite, you have to get a man in the jungle to kind of cut it down with a machete. Compared to, say, in Colombia, you can just go and harvest it with a chainsaw. So this one, um, the Blumenia, is a bit more difficult to access. So you have to kind of think of how's our team, how our team going to access this bamboo, because it's kind of it's, it's difficult. Um, then you get the I don't know how to say this, um, but we will call it the tambong, and this is the one um, in Thailand that is used a lot. It's very similar to um, Blumana. Um, Stylosactus urea is the common one, it's also used for products um, and this is a really fast growing one so, and this grows in China. And then um, Giantocloa atrovoclea, this one is a black bamboo and this is very good for interiors and for furniture and it's lightweight but easy to work with. So you've got to identify your bamboo and where you're doing a project before you can actually design it. Um, Thinking about harvest, uh, this is in Spanish, but I hope you can directly see what's going on here. Basically, it's really important to harvest the bamboo at the right time. I've just shown this tree as an example, but the next slide is uh, the bamboo one. Um, because at the highest point, uh, when it's the full moon, obviously we know that gravity will kind of suck the water upwards. And so you're going to have a higher concentration of water at high, at, you know, at at the full moon so when you're harvesting it you you need to plan when it's going to happen and also the time of day and because if you're doing it in the, in the midday um it's going to have water in the leaves water you know throughout the whole plant and this is going to make it he heavier to carry it means there's more water that's going to have to evaporate from the um from the inside from the fibers so timing um time of the month is really important um and the reason why that you have to be very careful with this is because in the water um, there is sugar and the sugar is known as a kind of it's a starch and insects love the starch and what happens is that if there's too much starch in the bamboo the termites will come and eat it and your building will fail so you need to know when to harvest it at the correct time to reduce this problem and this is usually as i said not at the full moon but also before sunrise um and uh yeah and then what you do is you would cut it down and leave it on the ground and you'd leave it on the ground for maybe a week two weeks to let all the water that's in the leaves to come out no sorry you have to leave it on the ground so that all the sugars goes into the leaves and then you cut the leaves off um so there's less water um in the actual bamboo fibers so key things bamboo does not like water as in rainwater insects and the sun um, and the reasons why they fail is because they get rotten quickly and they get moldy they get attacked and eaten by insects and they have a lot of uv damage so you know again thinking about it we are humans we need to protect ourselves from water and the sun it's the same you're designing with a plant here you've got to protect 
um, material. So you have to kind of treat it as if it were. It was the natural thing. And this is really beautiful because it's, in a way, the bamboo buildings have a lot of spirit, you know, because it's not just like an industrial material. And I think that's why people love looking at buildings, natural buildings so much, is because there's a kind of um, a sense of, there's an elemental sense there. And um, it just makes it really nice to be in. And um, as I said, has a bit of a, more of a spirit in there. So once you know these things, you've got to harvest them and then you have to um, clean them and, and dry them. And so you dry them vertically in the sun, so then the water can come out. You can smoke it or you can bake it. Um, and then you also need to paint it or varnish it, and you can do that with oil and then spray fire over it, which gives it a different look. Um, it kind of, it protects the skin in a way. It gives it a kind of a black burnt edge. It's a, it's a protection. Um, because sometimes you do actually have to expose a bamboo in the sun for some, I don't know, for sometimes some structures out there do have them. And so this is a kind of a natural coating. But you can paint it with um, linseed oil, which is really natural, wood varnish. And some projects in Colombia, they paint it with lime. Um, lime is a type of um, it's plaster, plaster of Paris. Um, and it just gives another, another coating over the surface. And then the treatments is flooding so flooding is when you pour um, immunization liquid through the top and then it goes through the center and it sucks down to the bottom um, and then you can uh, you can put it in a in, in immersion so you punch a hole through the bamboo you submerge it in water and then you put the immunization solution in or a bit more technical for those who have bigger companies and they kind of pressure push the immunization fluid through each each and every individual bamboo. Um, this is a bit more technical. Um, this one in the jungle, I mean, that's great because you can just be anywhere and, and treat your bamboo. Um, and it means that little like independent farmers can do this very easily uh, comparatively to these ones that have to have a workshop space, um, somewhere to actually transport to do this work. This is high intensity treatment. Um, it actually just, it works the same just as long as you submerge your bamboo for a long enough time. Obviously, the pressure one is going to be a bit more effective, um, but this actually works very well, um, this, uh, the, the immersion one in the immersion bath. And then transport and dropping. Um, this is a project that we did in California, and we literally like loaded a flatbed trailer, and we, we put everything on top, and we strapped it together. Um, and this is a very crude way of transporting bamboo, but usually they're done in containers, actually, 20 foot or 40 foot containers. Um, obviously protect it when it's going you know, long journeys or if it's being transported across the seas. Um, and if you don't have uh, anywhere to kind of store these things, even just a plastic to kind of cover it from you know, precipitation, um, that's, that's there too. Also, if you store it in these kind of cradles, it means that a forklift can kind of pick it up so I'm saying all these things because it's like uh, there's so many elements to just remember. It's not literally just like getting a bamboo uh, material and like designing with it. There's it's, everything is involved in it. It's moving, even the moving, and also storage. I may say because if you don't protect your material, someone's going to steal it. And we had a project in, um, in Guatemala, and we we brought some bamboo to site, and. Uh, Two days later, it was gone because we think the locals had stolen it for, to build parts of their house. So this is a commodity. You know, you've got to really protect your material, find a safe place to put it. Um, you can use hand tools here. Here's some uh, machetes, um, hatchet saws. I like using machetes quite a lot. There's a lot of control, self-control there. You get to know how to handle, um, you know, these hand tools very well have them in you know in your bag like inside and you know you become you, you begin to understand to realize that okay the bamboo won't cut there so I'm going to cut here because you know that it hasn't done that before in another past project or you can use like heavy machinery um you know like sanding sanding parts here um this is a table saw it's both it's both hand tools and machinery um, and then designing construction, you can use a lot of little bamboo sticks to make these little models. 
um, and they're really helpful because you can literally make them on site and then show them visibly and you can make them a, a scale model take that to site bring a scale ruler and then do the dimensioning there um, so that's always good when you've got a project and you and and people who don't really work with computers they can kind of see in a smaller scale like okay we're going to put that um, here and attach it there so the people that usually build these things as well obviously some of them are, you know haven't been to um, haven't had the training necessarily um, to like understand but visually when you put something in front of them like a, a model scale model obviously immediately they say okay I, I know what's happening there um, and then construction you need obviously a team you need a strong team guards can do it um, it can be free climbing as it is here or you can be using heavy machinery like cranes um, this project was in Portugal. We made bamboo columns and attached them to um, some steel hoops and the steel structure. Um, and this tower here was 25 meters and it was divided into two parts. Um, and there were, uh, I think it was eight, there were eight towers in total, um, but they were also held together using a tension cable so that there was very little movement within, um, for example, the site was really windy. So we need to make sure that they were really controlled to prevent them racking and then after care and maintenance make sure you varnish it make sure you take care of it one thing i have to say about that is um people think oh i don't want to build with bamboo because it means that i have to varnish it after five years um or oh it you need it needs a lot of maintenance well yeah that's the thing but it's also a plant and with buildings you also need to upkeep your services um, you need inspectors to go around, you need to check everything is going well with the plumbing, with the waters, with the electrics. So the same with same with bamboo, like you need to just check what's going on with the building. Are there termites? Um, is it rotting anywhere? Um, take, making that decision to do a project like this, you have to think about the future of it. It's not independent. So this is when informing the users or the future users, they have to take control and take care of the buildings afterwards and then replacement and um, this is a bridge that I saw actually in Indonesia and I saw that and I thought oh my god what's going to happen there is it going to be okay there's mold but you know in the end like if you treat it really well structures can last up to you know, 75 years it has the proper treatment and it's maintained and taken care of um, and sometimes some buildings they you know like houses they you, okay they may last you know 100 200 years but um, you're not you know, it's, it's, a, it's a question, isn't it? Like, what are you designing for? Who are you designing it for? You're, you're designing sustainably. Sometimes things don't last forever, but I kind of like that in a way that you, you know, if when, when a building kind of dies, it goes to the ground and it has no harm to the environment. Yeah, I, I kind of, I really love that, actually. So talking about now bamboo structures, um, when you do design with bamboo post, it's just one bamboo and then connected to the others. This is a, a small structure, like a kind of a, a tent structure. Um, and then obviously bamboo splits is a big thing. So um, I'm sure a lot of people you uh, people head to Madrid, Madrid Airport. Um, the ceiling is actually made from bamboo. Um, this is probably one of the most famous projects out there um, that has been that has bamboo splits used in the project and here it's it's fantastic because it's it covers a long span length of the airport and it looks beautiful doesn't it um this bamboo came from china and it, they've been able to achieve this wonderful curve um i think one of these panels is something like more than two or three meters um it, it can it, it has that wonderful undulating shape it can only be achieved with maybe a thin veneer um but i think that they wanted to exhibit the material as something really sustainable and what could be possible with it and then when you split it as I said earlier on you want to kind of make sure that you're catching the outer parts here closest to the edge so if you split it into six pieces you're kind of you're, you're getting a really a, a strong part of the um, of the outer layer of bamboo and you can you can split it with uh, machetes I said or cast iron splitters um, and or you can do it with um, a table saw um, and it's 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 kind of clunky, um, but there are actually industries out there that just only produce bamboo splits for bamboo products. So, yeah. 
Um, and then you can also weave it. So this is like flat paneling and then making it into 3D. This was a project that we did in Portugal to make a kind of a gallery, 3D gallery. Um, and then this is a little example of a Japanese joinery arch that I designed and made and cutting um, notches and trying to make it work to form this sort of lovely ge geometrical arch here. It's like a little bit of detail. And looking at split columns, so you can take the bamboo split and then bunch them together. And you can either strap them with, um, in this project here, this is by uh, Fabric G Architects. You can attach it with some aluminium straps here, um, or you can attach it with it's like a, it's a rope. And then you can make a bamboo column. Um, so you can bundle them all together and then have really long lengths of these amazing long columns which you know the possibilities are endless of your design really um bamboo panels quickly yep so you can just you know bamboo panels are made very commercially in in china and and vietnam um, and they kind they're put they're stitched together with uh, a wire that runs through them or they have they've been tied together with some elaborate braiding tying there um and then more bamboo columns so you've got whole whole columns before I showed you one with split columns these are whole whole columns and so you get sort of the diameter of these ones can be about two to five centimeters and land them together and of thin bamboo and then make them into whole columns and and you can clearly create really elaborate long span spaces with these um, which you couldn't otherwise do with uh, a bamboo split like if you look at this radius here it's really tight and you would be really, if this was one piece of um, bamboo split, you'd be really pushing it to create that um, because then it would split here. Um, so you can do that with, with whole pieces of bamboo. And with bamboo columns, you want to either put them together temporarily or um, permanently. And here, if you look with the three or the six, basically it sits really nicely within that space and that gap. So you, you don't really kind of like line it up in rows. You can, um, but here you're really making use of uh, its design, that it's circular. And obviously as well, the triangle is like the strongest shape. So it's really compacted together here. This one is seven bamboos and one bamboo will sit on, in between here. So it, it rests on this steel hoop. So there's different formations of columns. Um, it's just kind of what you designing what is it going to be for? Um, how much bamboo do you have accessible? You know, and then you can tie them together temporarily um, with rope, or you can have a permanent connection. And this is the most common connection is with um, threaded rod and nuts and washers. I, I drew this section. I couldn't find one, so I, I drew one. And basically, this is, you know, you get your your drill. A very long drill and you drill through the two or the three bamboos and then you attach it on either side um, and you have to really tighten it but it holds amazingly well and this is it this is really a, this material is so available around the world even in a shop in the middle of nowhere like a hardware store you can find nuts and bolts and threaded rod so it's like what is available to the people that is in the area in these developing countries can make buildings they can just use threaded rock. or you can make specialized bamboo pins to hold it together um you have to have i guess lots of artisanal uh, bamboo builders to do a lot of this heavy work but um you know they it just works just as well actually and then looking at bamboo foundations like how do you sit it onto the ground so it cannot touch the floor or it cannot touch soil um, because it will suck up the water and then it means that the base bamboo will get moldy so you need to protect it you need to raise it off the ground and this is a kind of secret technique that um, people have been using which is to um, put uh, bamboo on top of a stone but then there's some bar um, which goes through the stone and into the ground um, and then you fill it with concrete so this is sometimes it can be a bit um, shall we say misleading you think oh it's they're standing up there in the end you're using um, this is a new kind of new technique, um, but you're still using an actual material. So it's like using both things um, of kind of creative design and um, sort of modern, the modern way of using like concrete. Um, 
Okay, so what is new? There is an increased demand of sustainable materials for construction, engineered projects, for products which I'll talk about, structural building codes, composite materials, and I'm going to talk about parametric architecture and design with Abu. So what's happened? Uh, basically, I don't know if you, you should know about this, and I rec recommend everybody after this lecture or in their own time, UN Sustainable Development Goals for 2030, basically cutting carbon emissions. Because what's happening out there is the building industry and construction industry is producing 21% of the world's carbon emissions. And with simple things like changing up the uh, timber industry, we could use bamboo to help the reduction of carbon emissions. So this is really, we have to kind of look into engineered products now, just not about bamboo poles. And the result of the pandemic means people are conscious about cons consumption and building. Um, I think that you need to look beyond shelter housing and look, looking at bamboo as a kind of relief material to help people when there's earthquakes and floodings and natural disasters. Um, yes, it's good to have a material that is available and cheap and can be delivered to site really quickly. But, um, you know, it's, 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 it's more than that. You know, it's actually using um, products which can be used in homes or, or you know, if you look around your room, for example, how many things are made from wood? What if that was uh, what if that was bamboo? That could be a way to reduce um, you know, the timber industry. And also modular housing. This is a really interesting thing. You can create um, really strong beams and structures with engineered bamboo and create modular housing. So, you know, why don't we think about changing um, the industry that way and involving these new technical pieces of design engineered bamboo you know for bigger projects because look 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 what's available um and these are all parts of the things that you were going to throw away as well um look look at this this is bamboo fiber board this was scraps um you know all these can be um used for for different types of applications um building cladding and houses and you know these these have been these products have been out there for a long time. They're not new. Um, it's just we need to pick it up. And there's lots of tests going out there to see the performance behind it. But they're all, they're all coming up great. I don't want this to seem like a CPD, <laughs> um, kind of promoting bamboo and bamboo. But have a, have a look there and see what kind of engineered bamboo products there. I think if some of you are looking at your technical studies and you want to look at material, look at engineered bamboo. This is going to be good. And then obviously ask me later on. And then something very interesting is happening happening with the structural building codes because people ask me why is there not many more buildings made with the material? Um, it's because there are no building codes that are passed in certain countries. Like you've got here China, Colombia, Ecuador, India, Peru, USA. What about England? There isn't a building code. But you know, we we look to the timber industry for some building codes. But once you can pass them, once these building codes can be created, then we can start to do really interesting things. So this is what's happening now. Um, and INBAR is they, I guess they're the they govern or they pretty much promote the use of the changing of structural building code. So look at that website too. I, I, I'm going to put these links somewhere at the end. So it's been around the bamboo poles and splits to put them in sort of bamboo floors and ceilings and, and shapes. What has tended to happen is that they haven't treated it and they didn't dry it properly. So the natural bamboo expanded and, you know, had lots of swelling there and it cracked the, the concrete. And so buildings failed. Um, so as long as you treat it well, then, you know, you can avoid that. And again, this this company here, Future Cities, they've engineered the bamboo to have these grooves to create like a really complex lattice, um, you know, shape. And so this is this is what's going to be really good. Like you're going to be able to replace steel and then put engineered lattice bamboo inside the concrete um, that will perform incredibly well. So this is you you this maybe will be coming to building sites sooner than we think. Um, I want to talk to you about a project called the Zeri Pavilion. I don't know if any of you guys have heard about it, um, but this project was 
um, it basically was um, Simon Villers wanted to make a pavilion or um, sort of an exhibition in Germany. Um, because there were no building codes there in Germany, what he said was, right, I'm going to make a one-to-one -one live test tested model of the building that we want to build. So they did it in Colombia. And they made it in the time frame, and um, they did it with treated bamboo. They made it with a whole team, and they then said, "Okay, Germany, can now you can see that it works? Can we bring it over there?" And then they said yes. So, you know, using an example of, um, you know, building it one to one and kind of proving proving people wrong or proving that it's going to work. This project was very exemplary in the bamboo world because people started to open their eyes and realize, okay, we can use this just not for houses and small little um, things. It can be made really big, used for big projects. Um, I want to talk about uh, parametric design and architecture. Um, I don't know if it's touched upon at uni, um, but what is parametric design? Um, it's known as the algorithmic design, computational design, and associated design. And it's a translation translation of an idea through parameters in action. Um, you, I'll maybe well you can share this presentation later. But basically, it's you have parameters in your design, and then you can use that to your advantage. So, say for example, I wanted to create um, a structure, and then I wanted a beam to be no more than five meters long. You can input that into the computer, and then you say it beams no longer than five meters, and then it will help you calculate. And the structure or where things will go, things will overlap. And so you're using um, you know, your associations and constraints to design better. And then how is that used in bamboo? Well, there's certain, there's certain things you can do bamboo sticks to make these models, but you, you don't really understand where things are going to be bent or how um, the, the final shape of it or how many splits are going to be used. So Parametric design now is becoming super important in the bamboo industry. And I need to start learning more Revit <laughs> to know, um, to give me an opportunity to design more elaborate buildings. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess this shape here is a hyperparaboloid. Yeah. Um, and basically, a hyperparaboloid is when you're using straight line to create a curved surface. And I think the most Common hyperparaboloid is a is a, a saddle, you know, for a horse or or Pringles, and these shapes are really used for roofs and and much more now. So we can use computers to create um, amazing structures like these, knowing where you where you're going to tie, how much you're going to be spaced in between, will it be able to take the load of the weight of the of the grass this is a grass kind of palm and grass roof will it be able to take the weight of it and you can use parametric design to calculate that whilst before you were kind of guessing um if you were just doing it by eye and working with a team um so it's really it's, it's becoming so exciting now the potentials of what we can do with parametric design and some projects um this one was a bamboo pavilion in guatemala and uh, we taught them how to uh, immunize and simple bamboo techniques and in Guatemala you need a lot of um, diagonal bracing because there they have a lot of uh, earthquakes so um, and tremors so there's a lot of support there just to to prevent you know movement which does happen on, on on the lake there I've got more slides to explain this later and then finally I'm going to talk about the school and um, which is the late the most recent project that I did there I just wanted you to see the roof of Guatemala, it's all corrugated iron. Okay, so we were we were asked to design um, on top of the third floor of a primary school for 1,500 students um, a multifunctional eco salon, um, and using the material bamboo as a material to be a very kind of inspirational material for the children. Uh, it grows in Guatemala, and um, we basically turned that the project from making it from a, a festival structure and turning it into part of the school. So that was that was the exciting part for me was to think of a design that was going to be a temporary structure and then that could transform into a permanent structure. 
Um, so these were just kind of um, the different parts of the of the of the school, and so we have the roof, um, corrugated roof, and bamboo beams, columns, akareke. I'm going to explain a bit more about that. It's a, it's a type of um, way to infill walls using clay and mud and lime, and the concrete floor and skirting. And so first of all, we wanted to create a very simple structure because we made these columns and then we wanted to have 18 columns, which would um, be spread out across two classrooms, um, one, two bathrooms and create a ramp. But we didn't get enough money. We fundraised all the money project. So in the end, we had to reduce the size of the school um, and we still used 18 columns and um, a lot of our materials like the doors and the windows they were donated actually um, so that was really good um, but basically this multifunctional space me meant that a few classes could happen at the same time um, we would use bamboo screens to split the space um, and the, the you know the, the columns were already pre-made so that kind of sped up the process and here are some bamboo details we've got um, six bamboo this is a six bamboo column with two beams sitting in the gap in between um, and the base it's attached to the base with a um, steel strap um, and it's held together here um, with your threaded rod and your bolts um, and these were only oh, these were three meters maximum um, and then they created this really strong solid structure um, because they had to be resistant to earthquakes so the reason why bamboo is really great is because it has a really high tensile strength, as we mentioned. Um, but it has to really be move. It has to move together in one way. So um, it's working with the forces. If you design with lots of cross braces and um, diagonal diagonal beams, you you really get that strength when it's it's moving. And it, it was on the third floor, so it was we had to really be careful with this design that it was going to be able to be strong on the third floor of another building um and so even within you know the wall systems we had you know the wooden these were wooden um timbers so, sorry a timber um, joints that kind of even more protected the structure even more um and this bakareke is really good because it's has a sort of elasticity to it with the clay as well, um, because it expands and it's also made with lime and sand. So even if there was a little movement, it wouldn't crumble so heavy like concrete. You know, it has this. Um, it, it's able to take impact, like movement within the materials, um, because it has a lot of sand in it too. And bamboo bakareke buildings are very common in this area. So what we were trying to do was have a structure that was built on top of a concrete building and kind of be an example like okay guys you can have you know, concrete you can use concrete but you know your heritage as well is this traditional system with the clay and the earth and the bamboo um, you know maybe you can think about using this for more structures in the future um, another thing is that uh, advantages is that everything's local no toxic waste is made it's very low tech and you can teach um you know people to to do this it's very it's very simple it's it, it's labor intensive to mix all the, the clay um but we didn't really need a mixing machine like you do in concrete um for concrete um and yeah it's an ancient technique um, and it preserves the heritage culture of the people so this is a really beautiful way material and way of designing and building um, so here you've got the bamboo sitting in the beams here. I'm going to run through these. Um, and this team, it was mainly done by locals and international volunteers and myself. Um, and we we also got some volunteers to learn how to do this technique, um, which is the bakareke. So it's in it's infilling earth and sand and clay into these uh, into kind of like the skeleton which have been attached by metal like a thin wire and then infilled with you know this mix and then over that becomes a render which is a type of lime and then there are two layers of that and then finally you have your paint so you've got different multiple layers 
and also because of the layers it also increases its thermal properties um, because it can get quite cold actually in Guatemala um, it's 1,500 meters above sea level and it, it can get really cold it can get really cold there so inside um, it, it protected it very well um, and I actually found this project I wanted to share it with you it's not my project I thought you wanted to be interested and see that there are actually some investigations to find out the thermal properties of bamboo obviously here you know you're going to get one layer and one line it's going to not be that firm be firm have a good u value but obviously with three it's better um because here when heat escapes or you know cold is trying to penetrate it goes through these gaps here you know that's the path that it takes and obviously through three lines it needs to go through you know a longer path so if you look at the here the air cavity you know it's it's actually trapping a lot of air in there and it's giving it a very high u value sorry low u value excuse me so there's this kind of potential that in the future maybe not in this country so much but abroad we're going to actually be seeing um not only just for structure but for the outside to um, to lower the u value um which is quite fascinating um, finally, just the, the picture of what happened in the end, the final ones. We were not allowed to cut these rebars coming out of the building because there's a thing about tax in Guatemala. If you finish your building and you have rebars sticking out of, this, of the top, it means that your building is not finished, which means that you don't get tax. You don't tax, you don't get tax on your building. <laughs> so we built this project. You know, one of the things we could not do was to cut these down um and it was for a primary school we thought how are we gonna how are we gonna deal with that like <laughs> we built around it so in the end we had to put these plant plant pots and uh, make benches around these uh these rebar because the school were absolutely adamant you ca you must not cut these down um so we had to think of quick solutions to be able to do it but anyway look look what's happened here is that we've also we made a bamboo woven roof um, because you know corrugated iron gets incredibly hot and that prevented as a barrier um, and also you know added a beautiful texture to the roof so it had that kind of like the two elements there two functions there to to stop the, the heat penetrating into the space um, and then also you have beautiful texture of that roof so What's happened in the bamboo industry? Well, generally people, as I said, are becoming looking more and more towards new materials. The single market use of um, products is booming, which, you know, masks and things like that. But the biodegradable market is also is going really well. So they're looking more, you know, bamboo toothbrushes and bamboo products. It also means that small businesses are booming as well. Um, in the Philippines, uh, the hospitals were very short of beds, so they created loads of beds and, you know, they not donated them. I think there was a, a, a government scheme where they made, they supported um, bamboo workers to make these bamboo beds. And so this kind of, it, it helped people, you know, at the time when there was a stone people in hospital to create these products. And we know that bamboo will play an important um, part in the economy post COVID. And I've just seen this. Um, on the Indian Times here, um, that, you know, this is going to be really important for the future. We have to promote this material. So finally, predictions. Um, more people are going to be studying bamboo in its performance. And I know that the building regulations and building and the industry is going to change because I'm working on that at the moment. Um, the technologies are going to be incorporated, including parametric design. And will appear more in specifications and tenders. More universities are going to introduce um, buildings at you know, uh, Westminster. I'm hoping to do something um, with some students a bit more. More research um, in labs and testing, which is happening now. New immunization and treatments. I think that that is really important to see how we can treat bamboo um, with um, new, I guess, new immunization liquids. And I'm pretty certain that it's going to boom. So do check out my website if you want to see more pictures. I've got projects on there. Ask me questions. And I hope that you got a lot of information.
about this material um, and I'm yet happy to take questions um, from you guys. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tian. That was great. Thank you. Um, look, there's a few there's a few questions uh, that have come up through the talk. That, um, for instance, uh, what, yeah, well, I, I had one quickly, which is when you when when you were showing the soaking the bamboo and sort of treating it. What what are you soaking or treating it in? What's yeah. the, what's the... Um, just one second. Let, can I just take off my screen so you can see me? How do I? Yes. I think you just unshare maybe. How do you do that? You just um how do you do that? Yeah, good to share. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Okay. Okay. Um yeah, so it's known as a boron solution and that's made up of um boric acid and um boron. Uh sorry, bor boric acid and borax, which makes boron solution. And then you mm -hmm. add it to water, and basically that is a salt, and uh, is also an acid. And to combine, they are the protecting agents. So they they are that penetrates into the bamboo and makes the sugars um, less kind of attractive for the insects to eat, shall we say? Um, so that's why you're kind of curing it, and then um, once that evaporates out of the fibers the vascular bundles um you're you're going to get less sugars in there so this is it's kind of like the protection liquid that you you you, di you dip it in okay thanks a lot and look, um pete silver had a question which is when you showed the stuff the the bamboo sort of splitting in line it was like it was shearing because it was drying yeah. out too far yeah how do you how do you prevent that is that Yep, yep. So the reason why that happens because bamboo is harvested at the wrong time of the of the of the month. Um, okay, that bamboo, right. yeah, that bamboo was harvested probably when it was really it was near the high moon or at the wrong time of the day because it meant that there was a lot of water in the bamboo. And what happens is that when it dried, it dried too fast, so it cracked. Mm -hmm. So to avoid that, you need to do it at the right time. Um, and also sometimes when you remove the bamboo from one humidity point temperature to another, it also will crack. So you really need to control um, humidity and how how fast liquid is it's kind of evaporates from the bamboo. And, and to do this, you just need to basically cut it at the right time. Then you need to immunize it at the right time. And then you need to treat um, let the, the bamboo kind of do its own thing. This is not so common. This is it's not so common if you do it correctly. Um, obviously, right. sometimes it can go wrong. Um, but if you follow the right steps, it's it's not going to crack. If you're going to treat it with the right immunization liquid, it's not going to have insects as well. Yeah, I thought. I mean, I thought it's fascinating about the idea of when you if it's a if it's a full moon, then it's full of water, which is so. <laughs> that's that's um, okay. So look, I've got another question. I've got Miriam here. She's asked. Um, you're there, Mary, but she's asking different, about different ways of joining bamboo and um, when you would use sort of rope rather than using and twi you know, sort of other stuff rather than bolts. Is there a kind of. Yeah. So in temporary construction, say for example, if you're building a pavilion, you can use rope and you would use, actually use a plastic rope. You can use a natural rope, that's fine. Um, but plastic rope hence, tends to hold its shape a bit better. Um, and natural fibers will kind of loosen up over time. Like, for example, if it rains and it gets wet, it's going to become a bit more loose. So mm -hmm. you can use plastic one as a bit more of a um, security. We can actually use leather. Leather is a really nice one to use too, um, because it's it will withhold change in temperatures. And for example, if you saw one of the projects that I I put on on the Presentation. It was for a, a, a restaurant. They used rope to bind columns together in in a very kind of gorgeous, beautiful way. Um, they probably they probably secretly added pins there as well. <laughs> so sometimes you need rope and pins together. Um, yeah. Look, Michael's asked. Um, he says uh, he was asking about the time scale. How long did it take to construct the school building? Yeah. How many work? How many skilled workers were involved? Yeah. He says. Yeah. So we had um, 
three master builders, we had 10 volunteers, um, and we had a range of workers who kind of came in and out of the project, uh, which was about 10 to 15. In terms of the time scale, um, we were delayed because we couldn't get the permits to build the school. There was a bit of an issue politically, so that, that stopped us. In total, the school took nine months to build. It could have been faster, much more faster, uh, but it was, it was really spread out um, over a long time. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of usual when you're, when you're dealing with authorities in places like Latin America, um, because okay. you, you may be dealing with um, sort of corruption or kind of paying people under the table to get your project passed through. But there's no reason. I mean, it could if you had the permission, materials, and people to help, then it it's actually pretty fast to build with. You're saying? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Because it's so light, you don't need so many people to carry it. You don't need cranes. I mean, that project that you just saw of the school. Um, you know, we we didn't need any heavy machinery to lift up the material. We kind of hooked it up from the from the bottom, or we carried it up the stairs. So that's reducing time, effort, money transport everything okay excellent um look uh, scott's asking about how does it um how does bamboo behave in fire yeah interesting that one so with the immunization treatment it's actually also a, ref a fire retardant so if you there have been tests in it and you know if you put wood on fire it's it's going to burn if you put bamboo on fire it's also going to burn um, but it will burn so much more slowly if you treat it. Um, and also, if you think about products, um, uh, like if you're going to design with beams or laminated beams, they're going to be on the inside. Um, there's going to be an element where they're kind of more structurally sound. Um, yeah, this is this is something that I, I can't comment too much on because I haven't experienced a building myself where it has been set on fire or I, or I know when it has set on fire but the treatment is there already um that's widely used and obviously there's more research looking into it on, on how it can be you know how, how it can be stopped or it can be slowed down the rate of heat transmission because actually in the center of the of the node you've got that you know that space that vacuum mm -hmm. and what happens is that the temperature goes really hot and it explodes this is quite dangerous. Um, so yeah, again, we need to do more testing. We need to get into the labs and find out much more about that. So thank you, Scott. That's a good question. Yeah. So I don't know whether anyone else has got any other questions. There's now the chance to, if you put your hand up or, or there's another message here. There just lots of, you had lots of thank yous for what a nice talk. And um, uh, what bamboo have to do? What height about? Well, I suppose yeah. How how big is bamboo? Oh, bamboo can grow. Yeah, I mean you've got some bamboos that grow up to twenty five meters. You know, the thing is, you and wouldn't. What about, what about cross section size? What are, what's the biggest kind of cross section? Yeah, the biggest bamboo gigant bam, um, Dendrocalamus giganteus is the biggest bamboo in the world. That can be up to forty centimeters in diameter. It's huge. Wow. Okay. But generally, you want to build with we build with about ten centimeters um, diameter. Um, that one would be for sort of structural beams and columns. Um, anything below that, you, it wouldn't be good to make poles, poles like columns with. So ten centimeters, I'd say, would be like the optimal, a, a really good diameter to work with. So if, it's, if you've got ten centimeter diameter, what might the pole be? Sort of approximately. If you um, if you were buying it, yeah, it, yeah, um, three meters, um, four meters. The thing is, bamboo comes in start certain standard lengths, and you know why? Because that is how it's shipped around the world. So shipping containers, yes. yeah, generally are twenty foot or forty foot. Yeah. And so that's how you get them shipped is either those diameters, um, those lengths, and then you cut it down. Now, if you're on site and you're in a jungle and you want to build a building or structure more than 40 foot, you can do that. If you're say, mm -hmm. yeah, if you're say somewhere else and you don't have bamboo accessible, you have to have these dimensions and design your structure to accommodate for these, um, for your, you, you know, your design limitations. 
to the sure, 20th sure. To the, or to the 40 foot. 40 foot is about yeah. 10 meters, nine, me nine, and a, nine meters, point seven. But you will never get a bamboo which is 10 meters exactly because it has to, you know, you get 9.8 meters, 9.9 .9 meters, 9.7 meters. Um, it will never be 10. And because it's like a standard length, it's like, you know, how you get um, MDF at certain levels or yeah, five yeah. So, meters by one meters it's the same with bamboo okay um have you ever made a floating bamboo structure erin erin is asking you uh, i've been involved with a little bit not myself personally um i helped a friend do it yeah a little bamboo bridge um you're right because it's very buoyant and actually i would really like to make a raft <laughs> one day um, i haven't had the opportunity yet but it floats very well and you know one way that they transport bamboo in say in asia is that they they put it down in the river and they just let it let the river course take it down the valley so it has very floating potential there it's very buoyant thank you erin um, question and um yeah we just i think a couple of people have asked whether we could have a whether we is there a version of your um presentation we could have just so some of the slides we could they could read yeah there was particularly the one with all the different bamboo types and things but yeah but, um, um, what I'll have to do is that I'll make the thing is I have to make a reduced version of it because um, the majority of the images are mine, but I am actually working on a project which is um, is confidential, so I can't release the full um, presentation because of these reasons. It's um, I'm under okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah can, you, can, can you can you bend um, bamboo? Victoria is asking. Yeah, you can do it. Just add fire to the to to the base part. So generally, bamboo doesn't bend very well when it's dry. So you need to do it when it's wet. And you can add applied heat, or you can put it into um, clamps. You can put it down. You have to harvest it at the right time, um, and then you have to let it bend in that shape. So yes, you can bend it to a certain extent. But if the bamboo diameter is like ten centimeters. It's going to be so hard to bend. So your structure, maybe if you want to create for the roof, you want to use a diameter that's six me six centimeters, and then you bundle six of maybe six bamboos of six together, and then you can create that roof. Um, but yeah, and then you'd have to obviously fire it as well. Um, I have or to use have or to use bamboo splits. Or whatever. Yeah, or you can use bamboo splits. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great. Are there any more questions? Anybody's got? They're all shy. Everyone's shy about talking out here, but they're not. Well, look. Thanks so much. I had lots of thank yous to you, and um, yeah, it was, that's that's terrific. And I hope some people might might join the session tomorrow as well. That that the event I meant the TEDx thing, which I'll send around the link um, yeah, later great. on. But but thanks so much, Jan, for coming in again. That's great. Yeah, great. That's brilliant. Thanks. Good luck, everyone, in your case studies. I hope they're very interesting. That's great. Thanks. And, and look, can I funnel questions to you if there's we get some other first questions? Is that all right if I put yeah, absolutely. a couple of students in touch with you? That's okay. Thanks. Thanks so much. Yeah, and I'll will I'll send you the, the presentation so you can pass it on. It's fine. I mean, obviously, they, if you can use them not for you use them for reference only, that would be great. Yeah. This is this is whole whole kind of part of what we're doing. But yeah, I'll I'll, I'll send that through. That's terrific. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.